Hey, Happy New Year's guys. And since it's a new year, I decided to show you a new trick. I found out how to multiply money, how to turn this into this. Not really, but I will show you guys how to become financially free in 2020. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year. Hope you guys are excited for 2020. We're coming to do some big things January 1st it is so guys what's your new year's resolution mine is to save 50 percent of my income all this year so let me know in the comments below what your guys new year's resolution is and i will show you today exactly what steps to take to become financially free in the year of 2020. so if you want to become financially free this year all you got to do is click that like button for the YouTube algorithm of 2020 because this is the first video. <gasps> Please let it do good. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, so these are pretty much concepts I've gathered for, from quite a few people that I've been listening to and watching throughout the years and on the internet, reading books, watching videos, reading articles, this and that. And I have come up with five steps. I figure five main steps. Well, six if you count the first one, <laughs> but five steps to become financially free, financially independent, financially enlightened, whatever you want to call it, um, however you want to look at financial independence. Some people say, I don't ever need to work again. Some people say, I don't have to worry about money. I don't have to worry about how much something costs. I don't have to worry about living paycheck to paycheck. Depending on what you say is financially free, is on you. But I'm going to give you the steps to be financially free guys the main step that covers all of these is pay yourself first but <laughs> it means quite a few different things uh, actually it means pay yourself first but it can be under um, under the umbrella of a few different things so you might say oh if I owe debt high interest debt or I want to invest I have to pay myself first before I do those things no not really because those are forms of paying yourself first because that's actually bettering yourself you understand what I'm saying it's going toward your financial freedom goal it's not wasting the money away you're actually using it for a purpose does that make sense okay well let's get right into it so all of this together is pay yourself first but the very first category or first step underneath this whole pay yourself first idea is look at your finances basically look at your finances and budget you need to figure out where your money is going where is it coming in and where is it going out of you may know that your three biggest expenses is going to be what do you know what it is because i do it's probably housing vehicle food that is the main three biggest expenses out of everyone and you can figure out how to cut back on some of those some of them not so much you can definitely cut back on food you can definitely cut back on rent and transportation if you are serious about it you can move you can sell your car you can figure different ways out on how to budget and how to save money and pay yourself first but simple 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 equation for this is income minus expenses equals what's left over in your budget you might be in the red you might be in the green you might be breaking even but you need to figure it out there is many ways to increase your saving while decreasing your spending. You don't necessarily have to increase the, how much money you make, which that is a awesome way of doing it. But if you can't increase the money that you make, then you need to figure out where your money is going, <laughs> cut back on some expenses, cut back on the things you don't need, figure out your needs and figure out your wants and cut back on those wants and try to cut back on those needs just a little bit also. And you will definitely become financially free. Once you figure out your green number, your green number is how much money you have left over and that's, and that's how much money you can keep, save and invest. And it's pretty much that simple guys. A lot of people don't like to budget because they don't really like to come to the realization that they're spending most of their money. But guys, I guarantee you, budget for a month, track your spending for a month and at the end of that month, figure out where everything's going it will be a game changer for you in 2020 guys you'll be able to save so much more money you'll be able to invest so much more money if you just budget i didn't like doing it at first now i make it a game how much money can i save this month how much money can i save this week can i go a week without spending any money except my bills Hmm. let's figure this out <laughs> but guys 
Second step is eliminating all bad debt. That is excluding your mortgage and any type of credit called revolving credit debt. Um, now, if it's a crazy balance and it's actual credit card debt, you need to get rid of that. So there's a few different ways of figuring out how to pay off your debt, whether it be credit card debt, student loans, medical bills, anything of the sort. You know, you owe Best Buy $900 on that credit card, you better pay it back because they're charging you about 18% interest on it. Uh, and that is not good. So there's two different ways to go about paying off all your debt. Um, first is pay off the highest interest rate first. So that's basically eliminating your biggest problem first, guys. It may not be the most money you owe, but it's your highest interest rate, so it's costing you the most money. That's a effective way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be the Dave Ramsey way of doing it, which is more of the psychological approach. Basically meaning you pay off the lowest amount that you owe first, so it shows that you're doing something, you're chipping away at it, right? Um, and that is the way I did it. And let me tell you, it was way more beneficial for me, right? Because I kind of know what helps me and what doesn't. And the psychological approach, me feeling like I'm doing more than I actually am, is definitely help me out. So try that out <laughs> if that works for you guys. And I'm gonna give you guys a bonus right here, right? This is a bonus. You can get a loan and consolidate all of these, uh, all your debt into one loan. That way you have one payment every month. It actually helps your credit score and hopefully your uh, interest rate isn't super high. But this is only plausible if you get a loan with an with a okay interest rate and not in a crazy high interest rate of 20, 30 percent. All right, guys. Step three would be creating an emergency fund, creating a $1,000 emergency fund. And when I say emergency fund, now you're gonna put this in a savings account, but <laughs> it's is a separate. You keep this away from all the other money. This is contaminated money. You don't want it near your other money. When I say emergency fund, I don't mean to go Black Friday shopping. I don't mean to go buy the new Xbox or the new PS5 that's coming out or to go, you know, buy shoes or go on a date or go on vacation. This is strictly for emergencies only. This is what you're going to touch whenever there's an emergency, whenever there's an emergency, whenever something happens and you got to go to the hospital, either medically, uh, your car breaks down, um, something happened with your house and you got to fix a window, you got to do this and that. That's what this emergency fund is for. And I'm gonna give you guys a secret. I'm gonna tell you guys a secret. I'm gonna give you guys a trick. Show you guys something. When you start this emergency fund, when you have $1,000, you don't wanna put it in a, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. What I would do is, I wouldn't put it in a regular bank account, a regular savings account where you're gonna get 0.03% or 0.01%. I would put it in a high yield savings account. Preferably something like Ally bank account where it's 1.6% where it's a 1.6% annual yield on your savings account. You can also do something like Wealthfront which is 1.82% and these are all online banks. Uh, I don't know, I don't think there's any physical banks for Ally Wealthfront but you'll be getting more money on this in one month on this thousand dollars in these account in one of these accounts in one month than you would in a regular bank account in an entire year guys and that is the power of high interest rates working in your favor. <laughs> but like I said, once you have this thousand dollars, you put it in one of these high yield savings account and you forget it. And by the time you know, you might have $1,100 or $1,200 in there. If you don't need it for an emergency, it'll just keep growing and growing. Number four on your journey to financial freedom, financial enlightenment, financial, whatever you want to call it, independence. You want to save up enough money to cover roughly three to six months of expenses as an emergency fund. So you're gonna have your regular emergency fund and you're gonna have this one as another fund. You're gonna save up this amount of money, put it in a high yield savings account, that way it gains interest and it'll, it'll grow faster over time. And this is gonna be for in case you lose your job, for in case anything happens, you'll be able to cover all of your expenses, you'll be able to cover your light bill, your rent, your insurance, your phone bill, your car, Food, you'll be able to do all of that without going into debt. 
And the longer uh, coverage you have, three to six months, you can even have 12 months. Some people have longer than that. That just means you'll have more time to find a job, more time to figure out what it is you wanna do. You won't have to scramble to figure something out. This is a safety net, guys, and I definitely recommend doing this if at all possible. And I know it may seem like a lot, three to six months of your expenses is a lot of money. But that's why I tell you to start that thousand dollar emergency fund first. Once you chip that away, then you can go on to the next. Okay, now it's one, one month. Okay, now we're gonna do two months. Okay, now we're gonna do three. Boom, three months, that's a start, guys. And that is definitely, definitely a must if you want to gain your financial independence, your financial freedom. Number five, and the final one under this umbrella of pay yourself first is of course invest as much as possible of whatever is left. So this could be done in many different ways. Um, first way, which is I'm gonna tell you a little story about it, a uh, personal story of mine, 401k employer match. My job, because I am employed right now, unfortunately I'm not a full-time YouTuber yet, wink wink smash that like button and subscribe <laughs> uh, but 401k match is great because it just means that your employer matches a certain amount so I work for a company and they offer a 401k matching program which they offer they also offer 401k matching and 401 Roth employer matching with the 401k my company offers they match up to 5% so the first 3% of the 5% First three out of five, they'll match 100% of that. Anything after that, they'll match 50%. So technically they're matching 4% altogether. So they'll match up to 5%. So first three out of five is 100%. The next two is 50%. So add them two together, that's 4%. So they'll match a total of 100% of 4% if you are all the way up to five. This is definitely a tool of utilization like that you need to do. If your company offers it, just start. Start with 1%. And if you say you can't afford it, just try 1%. And you won't even know your money is getting saved for you, guys. A lot of people that I know that I work with, um, some of them aren't, aren't haven't started it and they've been there quite a while. Some of them already have and they've just started. Guys, I definitely recommend this. Um, and you can also do a independent IRA, a Roth IRA, which is basically the same thing, but it's not a matching program. You're you're taking your money and you're giving and you're putting it in a Roth IRA. And what a Roth, the difference between a Roth IRA and a 401k is a 401k is post, I'm sorry, a 401k is pre-tax money, meaning you pay taxes later, not now. And a Roth IRA is post-tax money, meaning you pay your taxes now on it, and later when you go to take it out, you don't have to pay no taxes on it. That is definitely two good ways to start. Uh, if you have one or the other, that's great. Start it at least in 2020 with 1%, 2%. However much you can put in there, guys, especially if they offer employer matching, take it, because that's free money. They will literally, your company is literally giving you free money just, to, just because you're saving money. That's how I look at it. But there's other ways of investing, like um, investing in stocks and investing in real estate. And if you could do a combination of two, three, four of these guys, if you could do a combination of all of them, that's even better because that's better for you for retirement. Uh, retirement is 59 and a half, so you can literally put money in here up until 59 and a half, then you have to start taking money out of it. Then you're able to start taking money out of it, guys. And think about 5% or 10% over 30, <laughs> over 30 or 40 years, guys. You could be a millionaire by that time if you do this religiously if you do this constantly guys you can definitely be set up later in life but if you can do a combination of two three four of these even more the more you the more combinations you do the better off you will be in the future guys and the more combinations you do the better off you'll be closer if that makes sense you're kind of closing that gap in retirement the more you do when it comes to investing in stocks Robinhood is a great app i'm going to leave a link in the description for you guys to sign up. If you sign up using this link, we both get a free stock, I'll get a free stock, and you'll get a free stock. Just for signing up, you don't even have to fund your account, and why not start 2020 off right with a free stock? And if you're interested in that Roth IRA, I'm gonna leave another link in the description to a app called M1 Finance. They have a fee-free Roth IRA that you guys can open up with them. 
And if you use the link in the description, I'll get a kickback from it and you'll get a kickback from it just for opening it, just for opening it up and funding your account, guys. And listen, guys, 2020 is your year. It is our year. Let's do this. Let's set it off right, guys. If you're watching this video, this video is published January 1st, guys. If you're watching this video, you're already off to a fantastic start. You're ahead of most people this year already. Most people's hungover and they just want to lay down and this, but not you. You're watching <laughs> finance videos on YouTube, guys. And that's that's the head of the game right there, guys. Um, remember, y'all, your <laughs> remember guys, your financial future is in your hands. No one else's. No one else is gonna do this for you. You have to take the first steps and do it. And I just laid out the most basic and simple plan, but yet effective plan for you to make this year, to make this year your year, guys. And with that being said, I'm Michael Romero. And if you found value out of this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, guys, because it's 2020 and this is my first video, so we gotta make something pop with it. Also, if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and consider clicking that red subscribe button, turning it gray, and clicking the notification bell to know the next time we come out with some more good information for you guys. Because I'm here to help, and you're here to help me by clicking that thumbs up button. Anyway, guys, if you want to continue your journey to financial enlightenment, all you got to do is click one of these two videos. And I'm out. Have a great year, guys. I will see you guys in a few days.